Hey guys, I'm Saurav. Welcome to the channel. Hope you people are doing well. Today, in this video, we are going to learn how to edit your photos in Lightroom Mobile and give them a cinematic touch. I'm using my iPad just because I like having a larger screen and it's easier to explain as well. But don't worry, Lightroom Mobile is pretty much the same across all the devices. This is going to be a super in-depth tutorial. I will show you the complete process step by step. How I do things, why I do things, wanted to make this video from a long time so without wasting any time let's get started before i edit my photos thank you story blocks for sponsoring this video and making this video possible let's edit the photos first step is the aspect ratio before we make any changes to the image in terms of light in terms of color it's important to crop the image first why so because all the decisions that we are going to take in terms of editing the image we are going to take that on a cropped image. So make sure you crop the image first and then start editing the image. For images in landscape orientation, I usually go ahead with 16 is to 9 or 2 is to 1 or something in between if I want a more widescreen look. Why do I say something in between? That is because I don't want you to restrict yourself because of the aspect ratio. You might miss important details. What I do is I select my aspect ratio then I click on locked to unlock the restriction and now fine tune the crop according to my image. I'm making sure I don't lose the important details because of the locked aspect ratio. For images in vertical orientation, I usually choose 4 is to 5. That's a great aspect ratio for Instagram as well. In case I'm missing out on details, I do the same thing again and fine tune it. We have the cropped image. Let's move to the next step that is light corrections. This is where we make the global edits, fix the exposure issues like shadows, highlights, and adjust the contrast of the image. I'm going to brighten up the shadows so that I can see more of the subject. Going to lift the blacks as well a bit. Now something you should understand is, I'm only lifting the blacks and increasing the shadows just because I want to see more of the darker areas. That doesn't mean every time I'm going for a cinematic edit, I'm going to do the same. Whatever I'm teaching in this video, don't follow it step by step for all of your photos. Understand why I'm doing things and then you will get a better idea. I will increase the exposure a bit and slightly decrease the highlights. Very simple adjustments, just fix the exposure. Next step would be adjusting colors. But before that, let's explore a shortcut and that is presets. No, I'm not selling my presets. I haven't made any. The good news is, Lightroom Mobile has inbuilt presets. I was never a fan of the old inbuilt presets, but the newer ones are extremely good. And I use this in almost all of my cinematic edits. This is an optional step. This will help you to speed up your workflow. It's not necessary to use it all the time. In the premium tab, there are two sections for cinematic. Cinematic 1, Cinematic 2. You can try other presets as well. For me, Cinematic 2 is most subtle and suits well. I will just click on all the presets and see what I like. I like the CN12 for this one. Super important, this will be different for all of my images. Just because I like the CN12 for this one, that doesn't mean it will go with each and every of my image, right? Remember that presets, all the different kind of presets give a different mood. And depending on the image, depending on the lighting, depending on the color, you have to choose a preset. So there is no one best preset that will work for all of your images. One thing to understand is presets are not the final step and it never should be. It's one of the initial steps and on top of this, we are going to build the whole edit. Some presets will make your images brighter, some will make them darker. If that's the case, we have to make the exposure corrections again. You have to go back and forth while editing an image. Next, we are going to talk about curves and color grading. These two tools will take your image edit to the next level. But before that, it's time to thank the sponsors of the video, Storyblocks. Storyblocks is a lifesaver for content creators like us. All these text effects you're seeing on the screen right now, I did not make any of them. They are from Storyblocks. I need stock footage, sound effects for my videos, one place to go, Storyblocks. I don't even have to buy the footages or text effects separately. It's all included in one subscription. 
With their unlimited all access plan, you can download as many number of assets you would like from their huge collection of over 1 million assets. I've been using Storyblocks for a lot of my videos recently and it has made my life a lot easier. Just download the assets and use it in your personal and commercial projects. You don't have to worry about copyright issues because all the assets are royalty free. To check out Storyblocks, go to storyblocks.com slash Link will be in the description. Now let's talk about my favorite editing tool that is Curves. It's under the light section. You have five different curves. We are going to focus on the first four. A lot of cinematic moody images have a faded look. How do you get that? Simple, by lifting the black point up. This is the black point. This is the white point. This represents shadows, midtones and highlights. Since the whole curve is lifted, bring down the shadows and bring up the highlights to adjust the contrast. As we made the blacks less harsh by lifting it up, we can do the same with whites but this time we will bring it down. Just with simple curves adjustment, the image looks a lot different now. The next three curves are color curves, red, green and blue. Again, very simple. Let's say we want to add more blue in the shadows. Go to the blue curve and bring the shadows up. Simple. If I don't want the highlight to be blue, I will take it down to the original value. What happens if I take it even more towards the downside? We are adding yellows. That is because opposite of blue is yellow. So when you're taking the curve down, you're adding the opposite color of it. Opposite of green is magenta and opposite of red is turquoise. So for example, if you want to add magenta in the highlights, you will go to the green curve, take the highlights portion of the curve downward. If this looks overwhelming, don't worry, I have a separate in-depth video about curves. I would highly recommend to watch it. Link will be in the description. This is definitely my favorite tool. You can spend a lot of time and fine-tune the results. Let's talk about color. First thing to adjust is the white balance. Generally, we adjust white balance when the colors are not correctly captured by the camera. But when you're going for a cinematic edit, you can change the white balance even if the colors are correctly captured by the camera. Why would you do that? To give a different mood to the image. You want a cooler mood, decrease the white balance value. Want a warmer mood, increase the white balance value. Changing the mood makes a huge difference. I'm going to make this image a bit cooler to give a Gotham City vibe. Here, I'm not going for a vibrant, colorful image. So, I'm going to reduce the saturation. Again, very important, this is not something I will do for all of my images. It depends on the results you're going for. Now, we have two options for playing with the colors. Color mix and color grading. Both are for different purposes. Color mix is very simple. You can choose a target color, adjust the saturation and luminance of it. When I want the focus to be on the subject and there are a bit of distractions, one thing I do is reduce the saturation and luminance of the colors that's distracting. For this particular image, I'm going to reduce the saturation of this area. Since I'm colorblind and I'm not 100% sure what this color exactly is, I'm going to use a color picker and I'm going to reduce the saturation of it. Just click on the color and slide your finger up or down to adjust the saturation. You can do the same with luminance as well. I want to desaturate the top part of the image. Now for that, I'm not going to choose every individual color. I would rather go to masking, click on plus, linear gradient, and now reduce the saturation a bit. The color grading tab is a very, very useful tool. You have shadows, midtones, highlights, and global. Global means it's going to affect the whole image. Let's add some color. Moving round the circle is going to change the hue, meaning the color itself. Moving closer or away from the center of the circle will adjust the saturation. As you go farther away from the center, you increase the saturation. When it comes to movies, when it comes to giving an image a cinematic look, different color theories are being used. Now, what are color theories? What are different types of color theories? I would highly recommend you to read more about it. I will drop a link of the article in the description. Let's say 
we are using complementary color theory. What is that? For example, we are using a cooler color for shadows. And now for the highlights, we will use a color exactly opposite to this color in the spectrum. You can adjust the saturation as we saw before. If you don't prefer this method and you prefer sliders, just click here and now you have them. Once you're happy with the colors for shadows, midtones and highlights, it's time to adjust blending and balance. What is blending? As the name suggests, blending means mixing, mixing of separate colors. If I reduce the blending, the separation between the colors increases. Whereas if I increase the blending, the colors start to mix, the colors start to blend with each other. Pretty straightforward. What is balance? This will shift the color tones towards darker or brighter areas. If you go to the left, the color tones shift towards the darker areas. Similarly, going to the right will shift it towards brighter areas. These are very simple to understand. With more practice and with more knowledge of colors and color theories, you will be better in color grading. Once you're happy with the overall exposure and colors, it's time to give some finishing touches. I will reduce the clarity a bit to give the image a softer look that helps to give a cinematic effect. I will add vignette to darken the corners and slightly bring more attention to the subject. In the details tab, I won't get rid of the noise completely. I want it to look more cinematic and not digital, right? According to me, a bit of noise, a bit of green helps to give a cinematic look. It's a personal preference. You might get rid of the noise completely as well. We are done with the edit. You can save this edit as a version by clicking here and create version. Let's name it cinematic edit one. You can go ahead, make some changes to the edit or even start editing from the scratch and save multiple versions of the same image. Later, you can compare them and choose what you like the best. That's it from this video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something about Lightroom Mobile. I hope you learned something about giving an image a cinematic look. If you learned something, make sure you press the like button and subscribe to the channel. Don't, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel. I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.